Good evening. Yeah. Welcome to Real Love Guitars. And here we have an interesting made in Japan Martin copy. And it, it is a, some, some people would say, a bit of a direct kind of knockoff. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty little thing actually. Although, God, it doesn't half look like the Martin logo at a glance. Um, it's got some old-fashioned simple style tuners and I don't even know what it's made of really it probably says somewhere uh, this is one of uh, Beecher's guitars it's a F100 apparently quite sought after because they're not bad guitars and my experience of this one so far is that it plays sound to it. Um, the only downside about this guitar is because of its age it's not only bellying, the, the bridge is rising up and um, giving it a, a higher action than it should have and over time would be in danger of the bridge coming away because of the curved top um, but it's also started to, uh, the string loading over the years has, has kind of caused this part of the guitar to sort of sink inwards a little bit. Um, the whole thing gets a little bit well actually it's a mix as this bellies up that tends to sink down and this bends because it's only thin as the uh, fingerboard so you've got this kind of guitar body distortion but um we've got this as a you know as part of a good deal three guitars together one korean two japanese and um, I went and got this from a local seller, Alex from Ace Guitars down in St. Austell. And um, actually, my first impression of it was, oh, it's tired. But um, two things really is, one is it plays great down this end. Sounds nice. And actually could probably be helped a little bit. And that's what this stuff on the bench is. It's the old bridge doctor. Well, actually, what is it? The bridge system. Sorry, it's not the bridge doctor. It's the bridge system. Oh, mine's got a knot in it. Look at this. So for 25 quid now, you can buy these things. Um, they're really quite cool. I've, I've used one actually right back at the beginning when I started doing Real Love Guitars. I did, I did one for a colleague of mine at work and um, it's worked in the same company as me. And I, I put one in his 12-string Echo Acoustic, which had um, bellied a lot over the years because of all that huge string loading. So I'm going to put one in here because it doesn't hurt. Um, some people, actually not some people, a lot of people say having this tensioning system in here um, greatly improves the um, the tone and sustain and resonance of the guitar. Who knows? Um, but a lot of people do say that. So I'm going to put it in to this guitar. Now it's a beautifully simple system that you, you get with it, you get a couple of Bits of, there's some information there telling you what to do, um, or basically what it does. Um, and then there's a page of information that tells you how to use the two different products. And, and one of the products involves a set of brass uh, string pins that go through here, and it, the, the bridge thing holds onto one of the pin, bridge pins. This one is the bridge system, which works in a very ingenious way. This little block here sits underneath the bridge inside the guitar and you put a rod through here which connect, connects with the block at the back of the guitar and this this then is screwed you, you put drill a hole through here and you put a screw in here um, and so this is held held underneath the um, thing uh, and this bit touches the underside of the bridge and the what's it this goes, actually it comes this way, it comes through that way and then basically you cut it to the right length so that this is in tension against the back, you put a screw in here, that will be shorter than that, you put the screw in and then basically you use the hex screw here, quite a chunky thing, to push this bit effectively away from the back wall and in doing so it puts the top under tension and bends the top back 
a little bit that way. And it's beautifully made, well it's simply made, but it's in, it's, uh, it's in, you know, a nice wood, the only metal bits are the screw and this, and, um, and then you get to put this screw or this bolt through here, and uh, basically you have a little mother of pearl dot that hides it. If you had some uh, circular little plugs of rosewood or something, you could um, you could cover it up with rosewood if you didn't like the look of the dot. The dot's always a good giveaway that it's got a bridge system in it. Um, probably one of the hardest parts of this is, is working out the measurements so that it's all given in, in US Imperial um, and of course the things that you need to do, the measurements are mostly um, most critical in, in regards to these things here. So a hole for this to go through and then a, a hole for this to sit in afterwards. Now let's say for example you didn't want to use that you wanted to use, um, you had some of your own for example, or you didn't have a drill that came at this size, uh, you could then use a metric one, providing you had a metric filler dot or a piece of wood, a wood plug. So it's not the end of the world. So I've written down the conversions here. So the first thing we would do is we would measure, um, so let me just think of one thing. Right, so uh, just one thing. How does this, why is that sitting up? First of all, why is that sitting up? Because that's meant to sit flush with this. So why isn't it sitting flush with that? Does it go all the way in? Maybe it does. So if we're putting that up to there, this has got to sit flush. Uh, if we put that in first, it's gonna pull that up against there and that's never gonna sit flush. So the first thing, has me kind of concerned is why is this sticking out so far because this needs to be flush with the top of there because they both go together underneath mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, figure three I don't know what that's got anything to do with yeah so I'm just that's the only bit I'm slightly concerned about is why this is sitting up it has to be unless I'm completely mistaken that has to be flush with that because the two things sit on the underside and this is all it's going to do is it's going to hold this tight by via the means of this thing here so let's just first of all check this is the right way up so that goes in there nicely and we're going to pull that right down and then pull that up so this has to be flush so all that remains is to get it flush with the top here. That's a bit that's not covered or mentioned. It doesn't say if this comes to you not flush, do the following. Okay, so that's probably still not flush. It's hard to see because there isn't really a flat spot there. But it, it looks like it needs to go down to the actual point where it touches. That seems to be flat. Okay, they give you in case the space is a different on your bridge, they give you three locating positions of this um, receiving thing here. So you can move backwards or forwards to one of these other two positions. This happened to be the right position in the middle. And I checked that out by uh, the correct position of this piece of wood here underneath is in line with the bridge saddle or just, just around about the bridge saddle. And this bit obviously has to go dead center between the back edge of the bridge and the edge of these holes, uh, sorry, the edge of the pins. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just get me a little bit of tape, put it on the back, get them all out of small masking tape now. Now, I think years ago I would have properly freaked out at the thought of doing something like this. So I'm just going to line this piece of tape up kind of flush with the back of these pins. And then I can push it down I can see where the end of the... Oh no, I took it inside. Oh. I'm going to need it. Um, I was going to get my micro metery thing do with this but it's just a little bit hard to see anything isn't it right pause when we go inside and get it hold on right yeah so we're looking at the distance of the 
width of this space here to the back of the bridgey thing. Call it 11. So we'll go 5.5 will be the center point. Right, 5.5. Five point five. Try and measure that from. Well, let's measure it from the front edge of the tape. So I'm going to draw a line between them. Yeah, I can't see much in this crappy light. Five point five. Five point five. I'm going to draw a line down there. I hope difficult to do, but. So, and then the basic idea is we want to draw midpoint between a dot midpoint on that line midpoint between the, the G and the D. So um, I'm just going to measure the gap, which I don't know what it is on this guitar, but okay, it's 11 again, so we'll go 5.5. Difficult to see very clearly here. 5.5. So I'm drawing me a little mark. I'm going to eyeball it. It's actually a fraction off, but I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a mark with a hole punch. Can you believe? Because actually, I'm just making sure, although that's the halfway point, yeah, this will do it. It'll, it's on the curve, so the truth is I'm not going to get I'm not going to get a perfect um, fill because it's on a curve if I do it right there. If I bring it forward a fraction, let's have a look. Bring it forward a fraction. They say this wants to be directly under the saddle, and if I bring it forward, um, you know what? I think what I might do. I might. What size is this little pearl, mother of pearl thing? It's nearly 10, but it's not quite. I think I might do 10 millimeter hole. And I think I might make a, a rosewood plug. I mean, I don't even know what this is, but a dark rosewood plug. And I might just plug that and then sand it back flush because it will be on a curve. I mean, the, the thing going through the hole won't be a problem because we'll make a flat, a flat where, the, where this has to. That's it. Okay, so, so let's make a mark where it's going to go. Mm. Yeah, that's sort of walking away from the from the. Um, let me just check something. It says halfway between the back and the pinholes, but it is the back of the pinholes really, because they run out of space otherwise. I'm just wondering if this would have been better a little bit further forward. And we can at this point we can afford to move it forward a fraction. So that's sitting. About six. Well, maybe I shouldn't have even bothered measuring it like that. Just do it like this. Five. Let's try five. Let's see where five lines up. Hardly any difference. Um. Out there. Out there. 
water about there. Now will we get the hole? Yeah, we should fit that in there, no problem at all. Okay. Okay, where's my punch gone again? Kind of lighting is dire. Working in the shadows. So the first thing we'd want to do is drill a 10 millimeter countersink at, to an exact depth. So we're going to go 10 mils because we're going to drill a, a wood plug later on. Um, so ideally we want a brad point. Is it brad point? Is that what they're called? You know, the pointy, pointy drill bits. Um, that's not 10, that's 8. And that's not a brad point. So <laughs> I should have had these sorted out beforehand. We've got a 13, that's no good. Got a 9, I'm getting there. Actually the 9 would do that one, but we want to do it in wood. So that's no good. Don't tell me I've not got a wood drill, a 10 mil wood drill. It would be a, a pain. Mm. The thing is, I could, I don't, really don't have it. So there's a, what size is that plug cutter? It's interesting. Right, uh, that could be, that could be a 10. No, it's a nine, I've got two nines, brilliant. a 10. Okay, so just um, so 10 will go down to there and all the way to there for a 10 millimeter hole but now we have to get the depth. Now the depth if you're using this would be three mils. There's no way that's three mils but that's what it says an eighth of an inch depth. Is it three mils? How weird. It says, mark the hole, center punch it, drill a quarter inch hole about one eighth of an inch deep to accommodate the screw head and the filler dot. Oh, okay, the screw, right. So there's a half of the screw head. Or the, and it's a countersunk screw head, so that's two and that's three. So the two things together equals about three. That don't make a lot of sense. Because you're gonna have to countersink it, which it doesn't mention that. How funny. Right, so this will need, once you've made a, uh, a 10 mil hole, we will need to, uh, to a certain depth, we'll need to countersink the middle part of it to get this in. And then we want to have just enough to fit our 10 mil diameter plug in there. So, um, question is how deep do we want to make it? Well, we're constrained by the overall depth of this, which is, something like seven and a half mils so we don't want to go too far we know that's a two mil so we need at least two mils to pull down on here um, so if we say we have let's draw it just to be on the safe side there's our bridge so we know this is 7.5 we know we've got to create a bit of space there for a plug then we've got to create at least a two mil um, a two mil thing there. So well, let's say we go three into is five, leaves two and a half. Mm, that isn't that much space, is there? If that's two, and this is two and a half. Two, 2.5, that's 4.5, that leaves three for this to hold on to, pull down. It's pulling on this and the bridge okay that sounds about right to me so 
what we're going to do is we're going to drill two mil deep, that's all, two mil deep counter, uh, not counter sink, but large hole first. And that's not a lot of space, but it's enough to just get an idea. Let's mark it off on here. Not the most accurate. I'm going to just do this by eye because quite frankly, I've been here forever trying to physically line the, the calipers up. Right. I'm going to call that my depth gauge. It's close enough because we can we can make any amount of uh, any piece of dowel. And we can we can make that stick up and then scrape that back or cut that back. Um, I, oh, hang on, this will give me a little counter sink. It's quite a big hole though. It's probably too big. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, and it says don't use a high speed drill. So we don't want a high speed drill. We don't have an awful lot of speed control, but we have we do have speed control on the on the pistol grip. So this is going to sound odd because it's going to grind a bit and we're going to go, I'm going to get this lined up in the punch hole and we're going to go. Make the first bite. So there's the hole and it's starting to take the, uh, the rest of it starting to bite, so that will cut down our our space to put in the uh, plug. It's a little bit difficult to put too much pressure on here. Just double check it. So it's cutting down the curve now. Get there. It's also giving you a head start on the um, on the drill through as well, which is good. So I'm using obviously I'm doing a slightly bigger one than would have been done before um, for that size thing. So I guess it's about. How many mils was this? I'm, I'm making a about four mils bigger, um, but that's because I'm using I'm going to use wood. So this is just about lining up to cut all the way, and it won't get it won't actually get much of the wood filler in there, but it'll be enough. all the way around. I just want to take a measurement to see how much that has come in at. It's actually quite hard to get this vertical so we'll be guessing a bit here. I'm saying 1.2 mils and we were going to go two so a little bit more to get below the thing on the other side. Okay, okay, what am I looking for? This. So we want... Okay, just over two at the highest part. Right, now what it says next is the size of drill for this to go all the way through, and it's calling it 3.4, but it's, we'll do three and a half, which will allow it to go through comfortably and then we'll also get the counter sink down to provide provide a, a little footing for this thing to sit in which won't be a huge amount so let's drill this through first this will go all the way through
shake out when the strings are off, which I'll take them off anyway in a minute. Um, thing is, I'm not doing any, I'm not going to do any adjustments to the saddle until we've got this thing installed. Um, okay, so the next bit will be, I think I'll need a little bit of space to do this. So let's let's take the strings off for fun. We'll replace these so we don't really um, the actual first fret action is very good on this so I don't think I'd want to do anything to it um, we'll check to make sure that the nut slots are good or if necessary we'll put a different nut on We've got a little locked round piece here which I know I hate because it comes around and stings you every time Do goodbye, trouble. Don't need it. Don't need to be hurt by it. Ooh, those slots are not good. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just just plastic. So, Let's see what we've got. one that might do the job here. This is tangled up something rotten around here. because they allow me to roll and lift. It's much better than the plastic things they give you on the end of your string, um, string winder things. Right. Good, good. Goodbye. sink onto here. Probably wouldn't do it by hand but we'll use this just gently. Just about right. And we've also got a bit of wood sticking up. It's a nice rosewood so that's cool. And we drop that in and that fits in nearly flush. No, you can't see it very well but so what I might want to do at this point is, is I might just want to drop that countersink a little bigger because it'd be good to get this bolt all the way out mm. okay that's got a back plate under there which is quite deep and this is supposed to touch that but that's actually gonna hmm. right first thing I notice is this currently isn't going through far enough so I'm gonna countersink it it only has to go through far enough to connect with that white plastic or nylon thing but if it doesn't go through at all we then have to with no choice but to set this lower but as I I want it to sit lower anyway, that's not a bad thing. Okay, 
nearly there. Oh, it's nearly out of sight. Okay. Oh, this is it's plenty. Why, why couldn't I feel that before? That's fine. And that gives me a tiny bit more to sink just to allow me to um, get the head flat in there. Edge here, us. We won't quite seal up, <laughs> seal up this little edge. Not, not without drilling further with the 10 mil one, anyway. digging for it. Anyway. Oh, that's what came out was the saddle. It's down there somewhere. There it is. I can see it. Okay, so the idea will be we're going to put this down through here. Can't see this very well. Line this up with there. You can't see it at all now. Quite, quite a technically challenging thing. This is only just wide enough. Only just wide enough to do it. Where is it coming through? It's, I mean, it's a shallow body guitar, but it shouldn't be too much. That's sitting on a bracing slightly. And this is just coming back to, just missing it. Okay, I think, um, I think, um, I actually think that Nick was, had this problem as well yesterday. I think he had ran into a, a, a bracing that stopped this going into the right place. So. Bracing means we might have to may have to take a little bit of this away. And that's only because it's a shallow body guitar. I mean we could technically take the top away, both parts, that would be doable as well. Um, how much are we missing? We're so near on this. Can't see where I'm Under, almost under tension. God, it's, this is very tricky to do this by feel only. Okay, well, that is actually through and it's currently just pressing against there, but that's not a bad thing. So if we were able to get this to come through and screw into the nylon. We'd be lucky if we were that far on target. Now the downside of this is if that if that is as um, tight as it gets, it may be that we've got no rotation room and I think that's the problem. So I don't want to jam it in there just for the sake of getting it in because otherwise we won't be able to do what it's supposed to do which is rotate as the, as the thing pushes it. So I think we're better off losing some of this timber on here 
um, just a little bit. We, we don't want to lose the tube and we don't want to lose the grip of that little thingy. And it's really down this side, but I think it's probably best if we just take it down evenly. Um, or rather than anything out. Like I say, we could do it at this end, but I'm a bit nervous about that not being straight. It doesn't matter if this isn't totally straight. But it does matter if that's straight or not. off these front bits and back bits because it's supposed to pivot in this direction so we don't want it hanging up on anything. Let's have a feel. So this is only hit this particular problem because it's um it's a, a shallow guitar it's a Oh, uh, is it OOO style? Quite call it. But hence, it's not quite got as much room as a full size guitar. Okay, so it's still very, I mean, I can get it in now, but it's still incredibly close to the thing. So, we're going to push that out and it's going to pull that back. I still think it needs a bit more taking away. In principle, we've got plenty of room. Um, let's speed up the job a little bit. That we have to have enough clearance to for it to rotate uh, to yeah, rotate a bit in the longitudinal direction. So it has to be able to go like that. And there's a brace in there stopping it. So currently we won't be able to get it to do that well enough. So in go 
there's the bolty thing. Connect it up under there. to keep it straight as possible. What we hope that we've got is a bracing on the very back here. We should have one where the uh, sides join and where the pin goes in. Okay, so we'll bring that as far forward as we can. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a piece of something under. I want to I wanna see how thick the how wide the gap is between them. Can I get this through? Yeah. Maybe yes, no. Getting stuck on the next one. Camera in there, have a look. That's there, so we've got one there. And it's almost touching. It can move, I can feel it's got room to move. It's not going to move that much, I think we've got enough. So the next thing you do is you feed this in somehow. Feed this in and somehow you can get it in position. Send it in through the hole. I can't see it now, I can vaguely. With a torch in here, actually. Right, there's me, there's me a hole. Feed the pointy end into that hole. Of course, I can't get it through there, so I have to do it from this side. Surprisingly difficult part of the process, getting this through. Um, right, this is confusing me because for some reason. I can't get this thing to go through, it's been blocked. It can't be because of this. It cannot be. Let's just check something before I'm completely mad. Right, there's no way that shouldn't be able to go through there. It's just for some reason, unless it's dead on, it won't go through. Let's just do that instead. Make life start out a bit easier. Line up, line up, line up, line up, line up. Line up, line up, line up. Science, but it's a mighty a fiddly. Right. Here is so what we have to do once we get this finally in place is we push the bar all the way to the end and we mark the point at which the rod comes out of the uh, the unit. Let's just make sure that's close to being horizontal. Yeah, it's got a big bloody brace right in the way. Okay, that's through to there. That's pushing against the brace. Now, we're going to 
somehow mark the point where this emerges. <laughs> you should be so lucky if I can even see such a thing. I think I can see it. Yep, there's the line. Now, will it come out in one go this way? God, it's even hard to get it to. Now it comes out and that's a, that's a problem. It comes out and hits the next brace. So that's why it's, it's impossible to get it in, because I couldn't get it at the right angle past that brace. So once we cut it to length and get it back in, it should be all right. It's just a little bit more difficult because of the shallowness of the guitar. And I think that's almost certainly what Nick hit on the other day. <laughs> right. So, get that back up there for a minute. You look at your mark. Yes, look, there's our mark. And then it says, uh, on this it says, go so many millimeters back from the mark. Move the tension and cut the rod three eighths of an inch shorter. And three eighths of an inch is 10 mils effectively, or 9.5 mils. So let's make up 9.5 mils. And then we'll cut that. So it's actually a very short bar, really. So we'll go exactly 9.5 translation from the Imperial. Okay, there's our mark. There's our 9.5. Okay, and we'll, we'll cut off there. We'll do it that way around so we don't mind crimping that piece of wood. Uh, let's use that one. Good, and then we'll just sand this flat so it's a good surface for the um, hex, no, whatever it is, that thing to push against. Difficult to get a flat surface on, on a tall rod like this but that's not bad okay so then I'll put this back in here this time we will put this in the end ready to do its its business okay and now I have the right hex key which is an imperial one you have to have that and there's our unit ready basically to be screwed in and to push this against the side side back of the thing and when it pushes it what's going to happen is as it pushes this is going to push outwards and it's going to effectively go like that it's going to pivot um, and the thing will stiffen up but it'll push the bridge back up that's the idea now the instructions say don't be afraid to tighten it a lot <laughs> relatively speaking so that doesn't mean an absolute lot. I think it just means more than you think. In other words, you're going to, the aim is to try and undo, it says if you haven't got any belly in, don't worry, don't, don't, don't tighten it too much, but if the purpose you're putting this on is because you've, you know you've already got belly in going on, then, um, then, you know, expect to tighten it up some amount to get it to take away that belly. Right, let's see if we can just get into position here first of all. Right. Now this um, this isn't it's not hitting the back yet, so we've got some room wind that nut in which is cool my regret is that I've slightly over cut the surrounding hole because that that um what's 
the word for it, the counter sink started cutting wider as I was going down further. Right, that looks to be horizontal. And you'll never know exactly, and there's no measure for it being perfectly horizontal. But let's just let's get, get it tightened up good and proper. Now this will do a couple of things. It will pull it away from the uh, brace on the inside, which is a good thing. Okay, now the difficult thing here, now we've got that installed, is we're going to now start tightening it and we're going to end up with hopefully this amount of push back. And the difficult thing to know at this stage is what the difference is going to be on the action. So I think a way of checking on that, let's just look and see where's, what's gone where. Hard to tell which is which at the moment. I suspect it's that way around. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. No, that doesn't. And have I lost? Oh, I've lost a, I've lost a little wooden shim too. Oh, and something else. No, that's a string. Okay, we had a little wooden sh shim. That's why. Um, I mean, the good the thing is, if this is, if this changes so much that it we're no longer where we wanted to be. We can always put another saddle in if we're lucky enough and get enough reduction, saddle reduction back. Okay, which is the bigger holes in here for holding the strings? I think it might be that way around. Hard to tell. Oh well, let's have a look once we put some on. Now I'm going to use a couple of test springs here. Um, I didn't want to use those horrible curly ones which were impossible to get off. So let's see if we've got some acoustic guitar strings in here. Oh look, Colony acoustic guitar strings. Not what I'm using for doing this back up, but it'll do for nows. Let's have a, a sixth and a first for fun. So what I'm going to have a, a look-see with these is to see what the action does. If I can still get my hands in to adjust either side of there, which is not, no, not guaranteed, but that will be possible. But you never know. I mean, if, I, if I only end up with one string on, it's probably better than nothing. Be great to see some actual improvement there, there and then. I mean, we might be able to hear it in terms of a pitch as well. That might be quite interesting. Okay. So that I don't know how reliable that's going to be. I do think we need. I do think we need a string on that end too. Um, will I be able to get my hand in? Yeah. Not very well. Can I reach that? Not with that. Okay. So I think let's 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 first of all do this up because it's actually very difficult to reach. The trouble is you can't really set it tight before you start. Can't, can't do it up and then fit it in because it would be it would be under pressure and you'd never get it in. <laughs> oh how far this is this is really tricky. Come on, in you go. Aha I think I'm doing it up aren't I? Is that even still on there? It's on there, right. I don't know how long the screw thread is on this piece of wood or whether it keeps on going. I'm going to have to just keep 
on turning. The problem is, it did tell me to measure it and take 10 or 9.5 mils, and I've done that, and I seem to have made the hex key, or the insert plug, disappear into the end of the thing. Oh, God, it's hard to reach. What is that? Don't tell me I dropped it and it's not actually doing anything. I think I might, might actually be in the case. Oh, hellfire. That won't be very clever, will it? fiddly bit. I wouldn't say exactly hard but definitely fiddly. So somehow I'm slightly slightly worried because I don't know how that came off. Um, so don't need to use that. What am I doing? And then this this peg pushed it out. I hadn't done it up far enough. It's supposed to be right. So it actually pushed that out. Okay. Well, we'll start with it in. Hopefully, we'll be able to press up against the back edge without any problems. And then we do it all over again. There's the nylon thing. There's the thing. Get a grip. Sounds silly, but I'm going that way. It would make sense, unless it isn't the right way. It can't be backwards. It can't be a reverse thread, can it? Well, I'll know. If this drops off again, I'm going the wrong way. It's all a bit cockeyed and back to front from where I'm looking at it. It's the the bracing in here is making this really difficult because it's totally in the way of doing anything sensible. Ugh. Can't get this in. And if I put it in the other way, the short end way, I won't be able to turn it round when I do get it in. So that'll be pointless. Right. Now I think this is doing up, right? And that's the plan. Right. It is, there is a bracing in the way which is really made this thing a pain. Okay. And it's also off centre now. in my eyeballs. Even that's not enough light. Okay, so you are in 
the hole now. In the hole. Is there any purchase at all? Will it go round? Thanks, Mountain, for making this practically impossible. Unless I had a, a long curving, uh, long handle thing. <laughs> yeah, it's got a, the braces on this thing are just in the wrong side, in the wrong way, both turned round. So. Um, I can't actually get safely. I can get it in, but then I can't turn it past halfway because the, um, the, the 90 degree bit won't go past the bracing. So it's hard enough, as you can see, I'm, I'm taking hours to, to even, and you can't do it at the short end because that won't go around either. So as you can see, I'm taking forever just to, to even get close to getting the hex key in the hole. My god, it's hard. Right, that's in the hole. Now, turning it. That's halfway. Run out of steam. Back in the hole. Another halfway. This gets tight. I don't. I can't actually see how I'm going to get any real solid grip on this. I don't. A bit nervous that I won't be able to. Right, that's on center, or as close to center as I can reasonably get it. I can't even feel whether it's. Oh, I think it might just be connecting with the rod now. I can think of is maybe I can maybe I can make a, a much smaller one cut this down but Morris having you in here is not what I need just this second I promise you cannot see a damn thing. In. I wish I could just lift it out far enough to make the turn. Now I was hoping to be able to sort of have the string on and, and see the difference. So I'm really not in a position to, to guess it, I'm afraid. Oh, Lord, this is a, a nightmare. <laughs> it's a narrow body acoustic. Oh, God, Morris, no. Not now, boy. Is that in? Is that in? Well, you get the 
pleasure of watching me struggle to get this ill-sized thing turn, which it doesn't want to do. Oh, Christ. Yeah, yeah. Not the right time, really, Morris. I was looking at it long ways. Can I get it? No. Nope. <laughs> Sort of busy, really, Morris. Right. I can get it in there, but will it go around? No, it won't go around. Too narrow a body. And if I cut it any shorter, then I still wouldn't have any purchase on it anyway. No, Morris. No. Get in there. even feel no what a waste of time okay, that's, that's just crap <laughs> this is crap that's fallen out okay when you when you're doing this with a bigger bodied guitar you have you can hold it in place while you do your first fitting and this the um Basically, this has fallen out straight away, right? So there's absolutely no, no use at all. Now, what I don't know, so I'm just pushing against nothing. At least I got got some turns in it. So if I just pull this right out again, I've got to somehow get this to stay up against the back wall. But I honestly don't know why it isn't doing it because I've got no access to anything. stop it falling anywhere is to go uphill. Okay. That's that. And that goes to there, like that. No, that's the wrong side of it. That's on it. Is that on it? That's on it. Right. So what I don't, what I can't tell at this point is how Tight that's going to be, and if I'm not careful now, if, in fact, if I hold it upside down and there isn't, it's not tight enough, then it's just going to drop right out because I actually can't, I'm no way at all of knowing how tight it is because I can't get my hand anywhere near feeling it. So let's, <laughs> oh my god. definitely worth doing. I oh, really, really, no, no, you, you really want to do this for an old guitar like this, honestly. Right, so if I, see how nice, I, how easy I can get a grip on that from here. So let's, I want this to be up against the backstop so it doesn't fall out, that's obvious. And I keep it pointing up in the air to begin with, that's obvious. Get it in this back part of the guitar. Right, get it in the back part of the guitar. Move this out of the way. I can't hold on to the rod part because that's just, it's not allowed. This is just, you aren't going to be able to do it. All right, there's that. And there's that. Feels quite tight up against there. And I have a feeling now this is going to be a fraction too far forward. Off out comes the, brick, the saddle again. Now, would you do me the honour? Morris, you moving would be a good start. Thank you. No, it's definitely not working. Right, okay, so verdict is a, is a fraction too far forward. So I can't get it back enough just far enough to get it to bite. So I go to there. Oh, I really do wish I had some sort of... What do 
I wish I had. I wish I had some sort of thing that would hex key that would allow me to turn it around this angle. Pushing against the back, yes. Pushing against the back, very good. Right. The screw coming through the back. Going out backwards. Absolutely cannot feel whether it has, whether it's gone up to touch the end because there's not a single way my hand will get up past that device and turn around. <laughs> it's just so unfair. Oh, I can feel the rod. Right. Now, it's touching there, so technically I could run the risk of turning it upside down. I could get in. So what I'm going to do is just for a minute turn that off. So technically, if only I could just get a grip on a bite on here, then technically I could. Put it in there and turn it, <laughs> but I need it facing downwards. Oh, Near the bottom somewhere, any chance? Wow, there it is, right on the end. Okay, I'm going to have to assume this is touching now because I just literally cannot make any adjustments unless I'm in this position. So that if either the rod is touching the block and staying in place or it isn't and if it isn't it'll just drop out again and I'll be pushing on nothing for hours on end. Oh, this is a this is a truly truly hateful task. Right. That was in but I can't actually tip it up straight so it stays in. Stay up, stay in. Where have you gone? In. <laughs> that just feels wrong. Turn that and it seemed to turn really all too easily. Drop in. Now that just, there's no way, if that's touching the bottom end, there's no way that will drop out at that point. I should be tightening it up. <laughs> Instead of just turning gently. Unless it's fallen into some sort of slot between the places. You'll never know. The question is, is the rod still in the right place? I reckon it is. I could be. I could be really deluding myself. Something rotten. Get in there. Got absolutely no grip to turn. Yeah, who knows? Well, first of all, that rod hasn't fallen out, has it? Probably good. Let's go and keep going until my puny fingers can't, can't do any more. So there's the first thing. If you have a thin-bodied guitar, prepare ye for a world of misery. But I bet you the payoff will be so worth it. turning to it so easily. It's either, it's either pushing this top right back into place 
like butter or it's somehow it's missed what it's supposed to be doing. It just, it just feels, what was that noise? Well that's going in. It does look better you know. Well, I suppose there's one way to find out, isn't there? Temporarily. Can't remember which angle is the right end now for this. Let's do it that way for a second. And I don't suppose I'm going to get my hand in there and have a string on. I mean, that would just be too much to ask for, I suppose. Would it not, Mr. Moz? Um, uh, that thingy has come right the way through. I don't know if that is too. I can't have taken too much off. I did the line and did 10 mils in, which is 9.5 mils, 3 eighths of an inch. Um, maybe I'll just keep trying to turn it. There, um, their little bit of paper says, don't be afraid to experiment with attention. It acts much like the sound post in a violin. Jolly good. Let's see it make a difference. Where's the, where's the, oh, now I'm running out of grip because the, the adjuster is now so far down inside the block, which goes to show it didn't need to take 9.5 millimeters off that rod. In fact, less would have been good. How will we know? Well, I tell you how we'll know because the action is now, at the moment, very low. Is looking better, you know. It is. That's <laughs> my poor hands. Let's try and do a couple more turns. I think the only danger I've got in here is that actually I'll just reach a point. Where, that's one danger. Is I'll just reach a point where I can't actually adjust it anymore. Um, there's a there's a sleeve. So I guess this screw part meets a plastic sleeve at some point, in which case it won't have any more effect, uh, any more pushing effect on the stick, which will suggest to me that it wasn't a good idea to cut it back at all. We should have, we should have gone with just about the length stuck out of the what's it. You know what I mean? Get in there. Uh, I think that's stiffened up. Take yes or no for an answer. I'll do one more very stiff turn if I can get the key in. Or two. Let's have a look. I'm kind of expecting to see that hit the hit the first fret if we really have made much adjustment. It isn't bad, you know. If that's We might bend quite a bit more though when we uh, put it under full load. I think it is. I think it is doing. Actually, you know what? It is doing a fair, a fair job on it. I think. But I think the answer would have been there's so much. If, if what I think's happening, then we're seeing so much adjustment. Then it probably would have 
been a smart move to have done half of that distance. Give us more rod to play with. That is kind of, I think that's nearly stiffened. So the answer, or the question now, will be, um, let's take this off, because that's really only a marker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to then, we'll have to, I think we'll need to line up another nut, because I think this is going to be very low. If it's done some reducing of the action, then we are going to find the first print action is very low. So I'd rather have another nut ready to cut. So we're going to need to, um, and we need to polish the frets. So I'll do off camera because it's boring, and then we'll, we'll fit another nut and be ready to adjust. This is still turning quite easily according to this. Matter of opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that is doing what has made quite a difference. We're, that that adjuster is so far along the uh, the unit now. It's so funny, but it's doing its job. But like if you know, if we ever wanted to, if I ever got to a point where I wanted to add some more push to this, then I would. Um, I've got another dowel for the right dimension, and um, definitely not. I would definitely not cut it back as short as that recommendation was, because it's not leave, it's not left us enough rod to play with. See what what I think I've hit is the maximum. I think I've perhaps we hit the maximum um, adjustment pressure. I think, I think that's about as, as far as we can really go with that. Which I actually think is quite something. Um, I'm not sure it's made any adjustment to the geometry at this end. I don't think it can exactly. Um, right, okay, so that was fun. Um, what I'm going to do is hang this up here for a minute. And off camera, I'm going to prepare another nut. I'm going to move Mr. Morris. Something's adjusting. Um, I'm going to move Mr. Morris and then we'll take it from there. So that was an interesting sound. You're just giving up the ghost, are you? It says, don't be afraid. It told me not to be afraid. <laughs> Morris, it told me not to be afraid. Should I be afraid? Should I? I've got a feeling I should be afraid, actually. Well, whatever was creaking away. Hmm. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, having put all the strings on, um, the action is, needs to come down a little bit than that, and I think there's room for adjustment down here, which, um, uh, don't, I'm trying to work out whether that's as a result of tightening up the bridge or not. I broke a string, that's typical. Um, but let's have a look and see what happens if we take out this space off that lives under here. Um, let's just fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. But it's it's played, played nicely. I, the slight downside of this is not knowing much about how it played before. Um, it's, it's quite difficult to know what the improvement is, if any. So I'm just going to hoik out this tall, rather big chunk of um, wood. Now that's about, what is that? I mean that's quite quite big, so we, it's a millimetre or so, 1.3. Let's see what happens if we just go back to this. Now I don't know if that's enough to clear, even if it's enough to clear the decks at the moment, so it might not be. So let's have a, a look. See, these are 
sacrificial strings, so I don't mind putting them on and off a few times. Um, if we haven't got enough clearance of these strings, then we might just find a, another piece of shim that isn't as big as 1.3. We'll just take it up 0.35 or something like that. Bit of copper. Okay, so let's just have a quick look. These are all clearing. They're all clearing the wood of the bridge, which is quite cool. Let's see what happens when we go up to tune. Nice action. So there's enough room for that adjustment. Now there's going to be a bit of downwards adjustment at the nut, um, but let's have a look at what the action looks like. That's lovely. It starts to, it's still a bit dipping off from here, but we knew that anyway. Okay, so the nut is in place. Let's now get on with adjusting it down to the required action. We're not going to go any further or any different there. Let's do one more tune just to get this under the right tension. Doesn't have to be exact. Just looking for an approximate pressure. That's a B string from the electric guitar, so it's a bit of a cheat that last one. Okay, so what we're looking for is just to adjust the uh, first fret action, and I'm going to go to a 0.4 on here, which is a little bit higher than electric. Um, and I, I prefer not to adjust uh, a tusk nut, but there is quite a bit of room for it here. So let's start with, actually not a huge amount. In fact, almost none there. So it's a different radius, this nut from the actual guitar. That's a slight problem, but let's have a look what we got. Okay, we're about 0.35. Let's stick with a 0.4 for these next strings and we'll go with that. So we'll just take a very small downward go at this. And we'll try and keep it as smooth and as free running as possible. This is where this tool comes in handy, the thingy, <laughs> V-notch file, thing, jeweler's file, um, very good for moving lots of material in one go. And then if we need to, we can round out the bottom of the slot with the correct file to get the right shape. It tends to dirty it up as well. It's close, but not quite. So we're just gonna do a little bit more with this. <sighs> On the mark. On the ball. So, so after this, once I've got the first fret action right, I'm going to take these sacrificial strings off. I'm going to polish the frets 
um, give the guitar an old over clean and then we'll be ready to put the new frets on, no, new springs. Um, but this is going to be an amazing action considering the condition it was in. Yeah, this is quite a big discrepancy, the end outside E's, so they need a bit more work on those. But it's worth doing, because then we get a lovely action. Okay, a bit of rounding out with this one. Just on the four fraction more than I'm going to leave it because it's it's the original slot and I'd rather leave it there like that. This will be a little high probably. Actually, that's not bad either. It could just be the high E that's <laughs> the problem. I suspect it is actually. In fact, that's exactly how I'm going to leave it. Get the tune. Superb action all the way up here. Wow. Um, so I think I think I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put the cover truss rod cover on this and I'm gonna take it back in the house tonight and play it, get a feel, and see if we need to do any more adjusting. And then I'm going to finish it tomorrow with. Um, Ah, right, is that in the right place anymore? That's the trouble when you put on... You put on a new nut, sometimes it's deeper than the original one. But it's not, it's fine. actually. There's a little bit of curvature left but nothing compared to what it was. Wow. <laughs>
works out. Yeah, that's. impressed so far. There's a few funny bangs and cracks and stuff but that's holding together. My only downside was that, that uh, a countersink digging the hole a bit bigger than I wanted so I'm gonna have to improvise. I could probably fill it with some glue and sawdust actually, um, glue and rosewood. I'd probably go with a, first of all go with a plug and then fill in around the edges. Um, but I'll do that when the string's off. But anyway, there you go. That was that was fun, wasn't it? I mean, not difficult, but not exactly easy either. Plastic nut going in the bin. I wish I had an automatic reordering system. That thing would order me a new task nut. I'm glad to put a task nut on. I think this old thing deserves it, actually. Um, <laughs> Mountain, not Martin, Mountain. I bet that was a lawsuit and a half waiting to happen. Mount <laughs> established 1948. Ah, don't believe you. Uh, never mind. But yeah, that's fantastic. And that's, that's definitely stiffened that up. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, it, it, it puts pressure on there, and of course it's say improves the tone and the volume. Well, that was 
was interested in is that this action to play. Open that one. piece of copper under there or we'd put a few sheets of um, silver foil on the bottom side of there and that would clear that just about clear it but it's minuscule and this was really only ever going to be a strummer guitar acoustic guitar and a campfire to do the <laughs> Roger Waters stuff. Feels like it's going to stabilise and hold together when it's just a nice action. A tiny tweak maybe to get rid of that. If, if that's really something you're ever going to really play. I mean you can press it down, it goes away just. out overnight and then um, finish it tomorrow. <laughs> 